శ్రీ గురుభ్యో నమ గురుర్బ్రహ్మ గురుర్విష్ణు గురుర్దేవో మహేశ్వర గురు సాక్షాత్ పరం బ్రహ్మ తస్మై శ్రీ గురువే నమ వెల్కమ్ టు అవర్ థర్టీ ఫిఫ్త్ వీక్లీ ఆన్లైన్ కాశ్మీర్ కల్చరల్ హెరిటేజ్ అవేర్నెస్ సిరీస్ వీ హ్యావ్ విత్ అస్ టుడే శ్రీ రాకేష్ కౌర్ అండ్ ద టాపిక్ ఈజ్ వై we are kashmir why we are all kashmiris sri rakesh k kaur is the author of the best seller the last queen of kashmir published by harper collins and the critically acclaimed dawn the warrior princess of kashmir published by penguin india he has had a distinguished business career as a ceo of a major publicly traded us corporations he was a founding contributor to the first chair of india studies at the university of california berkeley and to the center for the advanced study of india at university of uh, pennsylvania as also the contributor to the matu center for india studies at the state university of new york he has an mba from the university of chicago where he was a leon carroll marshall fellow an ms from and ms from brown university he was instrumental in the recovery from the german government of the stolen tengapura durga the oldest continuously worshiped durga in the world he is married to dr shushma kaur a pediatric endocrinologist and they have two sons and one more he was a gold medalist from iit delhi before i hand over to rakesh ji we thank sri kanchi mat for our ongoing series and offer our namaskaram to his holiness sri shankar vijayendra saraswati swami gal sri kanchi mat has always been in the forefront modestly working with the sole aim of national integration spiritual enlightenment and preserving the uniqueness of kashmir as kashmir is our cultural heritage over to you rakesh ji thank you namaskar mr shankar i really appreciate this invitation let me begin with the mahabharat where lord krishna when enumerating his glorious form states that i am debate among the disputants nirkuta in 700 bc picks up on this theme of debate and says that when the rishis were departing the world forever they were asked who would guide humans and they replied henceforth debating will be your seer my talk today is titled why we are all kashmiris now this admittedly extreme title is designed to lay the debating gauntlet down if there is a debating challenger in the audience then let him emerge and if not then let this proclamation become the champion but i say with a smile that the mahabharat wisely counsels us that it is not about win or lose in indian debating vara one does not treat knowledge as power but that he who debates wants to use knowledge as a bridge builder of understanding a process of becoming that can bring together all living beings the thesis and the antithesis in a debate must lead to a synthesis my hope in this provocative title is 
that even as it seeks to stimulate you, that it is a unifying construct that leads to a better world, a better life for all. After all, that is the mission of our host, the Kanchi Mutt. What I do want to make sure is, at the very beginning, that you not interpret the word Kashmiri in a sectarian, geographical, or an accident of birth sense. Kashmirian rises above all those narrow limitations that are inherently closed systems. As I will explain, it is to be seen as a lifestyle and value system. With that as preface, I start by saluting Kanchi Mutt, home of the goddess Tripura Sindri. I salute her three manifestations, her Lalita form, her mantra, and the striking Sri Chakra Yantra. I salute also Hari Parvat in Srinagar Kashmir, our homeland and home of the first Swambu Sri Chakra. So let me begin by asking, answering your natural question, who is a Kashmiri? Before you decide whether you are Kashmiri or not. The Kashmirians start with a simple proposition that everything begins with desire. Ichcha Shakti. This desire confers upon us only one birthright. Now, all the constitutions in the world, they have a long laundry list of rights. But in the Kashmirian world, there's only one birthright that you have. But it's a very important birthright that no constitution has. This birthright is the freedom to achieve what is your life quest. And the Kashmirians defined life's end goal in heroic terms as unbounded fulfillment while alive, whether physical or, most importantly, metaphysical. Our pragmatism was reflected in our answer to the question, Hum kya chahte hai? What do we want? And we Kashmirians, of which you are going to be one, were shameless. We said we want bhukti, complete fulfillment of worldly desires. We want mukti, that of liberation. And we want it while we are alive. <laughs> we don't want to be diverted with promises of a mythical paradise or heaven, which is all afterlife and who knows. We also recognize that to attain fulfillment and liberation, needed powers beyond that of normal humans. So we wanted Siddhis thrown in also. Now some tiny pseudo-Kashmiri minds may shout, we want Azadi. But the real Kashmiris are big thinkers. They want it all. By the way, the word all is a very interesting word. It is the first name for Vishnu. So if you go to the Sahasranama, Vishnu Sahasranama, you will see all, Sarva, is his first name. So anyone who wants all is a Kashmiri. And the three words that characterize the all state are Siddhi, Bhukti, and Mukti. Now, I'm very confident that there is not a single one of you who is listening to this program who would not want all. 
after all, why would you sell yourself short? Unless you have been subjugated and unless you have been programmed to give up your birthright. So, so far, I think there is a very high probability that in your desire, you are Kashmiri at your root desire. And what I have said is true of most Hindus and Hindu systems. So Siddhi, Bhakti, Mukti, these are words that you will hear from Kashmir to Kanyakuna. Three words in terms of life's desire, life's objective function. Now, all around the world, one finds a mysterious phenomena. That is, when other cultures try to answer the question of what they want out of life, the answer is also generally given in a three-word slogan. For the French, it is liberty, equality, fraternity. For the Americans, it could be health, wealth, and happiness. Uh, for the blacks, it could be Black Lives Matter. For the Islamic world, it could be Allah is supreme. Coming back to our three-word goal, how do we get to that end goal? How do we travel there? And the best guidance to that, that we can start with, is what President of India, Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, gave to the question as to what is Hinduism? His answer was that it was a way of life and anyone traveling on that road was a Hindu. This definition was also picked up by the Supreme Court of India. So if Hinduism in general, of which Kashmirism is a part of, because we are all streams arising out of the Vedas, then we have to only identify the highway that the Kashmiris have traveled on for the past 5,000 years. What are the dimensions of this way of life highway that can be called Kashmirism? And of course, my goal is to convince you that you should be traveling on this highway also. The resplendent Tripura Sundari means the three beauties. You know, you don't have to complicate it. You don't have to get very esoteric about it. I'm going to keep it very practical and very pragmatic. So Tripura Sundari means three beauties. And the very name description has a big, big hint in it. Right away, we can guess that the highway we want to travel on, the very first metric of this highway should be that it should be beautiful. This highway should be the ultimate scenic highway. But why beauty? And why did the Kashmirians spend over a thousand years mastering it? Starting from Bharata's Natya Shastra 
all the way to more than a thousand years later with Abhinav Gupta. Because beauty attracts and perfected beauty results in a one-pointed magnetic attraction which results in total immersion. That is why the famous Kashmiri song Bumro Bumro resonates so much intuitively. It is a song of the bumblebee that drowns in the nectar of the beautiful flower and cannot escape because he is drunk with beauty. The bumblebee is the seeker. Abhinav Gupt, the great Shavite master, compared himself to the bumblebee. But why is it beyond its amrit nature? Why is it that the Kashmirians were so obsessed with it that Professor Sheldon Pollock of Columbia University called it, called Indian aesthetics its greatest contribution to humanity. That's a pretty remarkable honor to give. Because Good taste, rasa, was not just an internal development. It was the mark of a cultured civic being and that of an advanced culture. No wonder, until recent times, Manto the poet wrote to Nehru, that to be Kashmiri is to be handsome or beautiful. The appropriateness of this beauty highway with Tripura Sundari is the beauty in beauty. Is that we can see the alternatives in front of us. The world is filled with the ugly, which frightens and repels. And correctly so, because this ugliness is the mark of the violent beast, which is death itself. Beauty is the mark of life. It is the stamp of creative nature. It is the life force of reproduction. It is the super orgasmic ecstasy. That is why we all worship Tripura Sundari as the embodiment of ultimate beauty. And India is unique out of all civilizations in giving beauty this highest honor in its value system. And in India, I am proud that the Kashmirians led the way. The second realization of the Kashmirian highway also begins with desire. Kashmir offers an interesting definition of what knowledge is. The answer, it is knowledge is that which converts desire into fruits or bhukti. So the pursuit of knowledge became paramount in Kashmir Valley because that is how one was going to get maximum worldly fulfillment. Not surprisingly, Kashmir was referred to by Europeans as the cradle of civilization. Knowledge is truth-seeking. The pursuit of knowledge in Kashmir involved techniques that were greater than the current Western models 
of empirical and sensory observation, logic, inductive and deductive. The greatest enemy of truth is violence. And that is why the Kashmirians endorsed non-violence for civil society. But it was only in Kashmir that an extraordinary stance was taken not to be found anywhere else in the world. Sage Vashishta tells Lord Ram that if he must choose between the gods and truth, then O Ram, you should side with truth and reject the gods. Can you imagine what blasphemy laws Sage Vashishta would have triggered? But Vashishta was a realized soul. He had penetrated that truth is synonymous with the creator and as the Rig Veda says, the gods came later than the creation of the creator. So gods are subordinate to truth. We should, even as we adopt truth as the second dimension of the Kashmirian highway, we should celebrate Sayyid Vashishta as the patron saint of blasphemy because he gave us the freedom to pursue truth without any constraints. Again, I submit to you, look at the opposite. Look at the faith-based systems that are cracking at the seams because those seams, those systems cannot keep up with the pace of the truth. Increasingly, their adherents are either lapsing and becoming atheists or their followers are becoming desperate because they cannot reconcile the contradictions of their highway with the truth and their road, even if paced with good intentions, is causing them to regress and taking them into darkness. Meanwhile, Hindus are filled with wonder, with awe, that as truth reveals more of nature, whether it's through quantum science or any other process of discovery, that it seems to reveal identity with what our rishis intuited was the nature of reality. So the second beauty of Tripura Sundari in the Kashmirian framework is the blazing glory of truth. One of the recent examples of the power of truth was the movie, The Kashmir Files, which in four weeks smashed the house of ways, which India had become over the last 75 years, sweeping everything away in its path like a giant tidal wave. And as India, increasingly unlocks its power of truth, watch how we accelerate in our progress and rewards. But for that, India will need what the Kashmirians say are the Yodas, Yodas who are the power warriors of truth. These Yodas are the giants that we have to grow into if we have to travel on the Kashmiri highway. But even 
as the Kashmirians pursue knowledge, they were always aware of its limits in reaching truth. They knew that all knowledge pathways ultimately hit a paradox when it encounters Rahasya, the great mystery. They were cognizant of the possibility of the restless mind and senses going astray. In fact, an asura is he or she who lives in the world of sensor, sensory pleasures entirely. Because the senses feed the ego, the mind's ego, and the mind says, this is it. There is nothing beyond it. Repeatedly, the Kashmirian texts warn against this. In the Yoga Shisht, a popular Kashmir Shavai text, it says, the fiction of the mind, like that of a dragon, continues so long as we are subject to the error and ignorance of taking the world for real. Again, the error of the mind and its perceptions continues as long as one believes his personality to consist in his body and understands the phenomenal world, the world of phenomena, as the only reality. So for the advanced practitioner, there is a third Tripura beauty the consciousness-seeking pathway. The Kashmirians compared the mind encountering consciousness to a bat, a blind bat struck by light. And it is here that one should differentiate the Western system from the Indic one. In the West, the subject is always understood to be subjugated and the object is real. In fact, when a person says, I am being objective, he says it in the West with pride. But in the Indic system, the self is supreme. It's only the self that has complete awareness. It is free. It is the repository of the entire truth. Where is the object? is an entity of incomplete knowledge. Maya Shakti is real. It is not an illusion, according to the Kashmiris. Maya is as real a manifestation of Shiva as anything else. But, and it is not a state of ignorance, it is a state incomplete knowledge. Every object in the universe will only give you incomplete knowledge. So consciousness is the Siddhi power. It yields creativity, Prathaba. It yields innovation, which accelerates human evolution. It's a very practical benefit. How beautiful is the first experience of consciousness? Why is consciousness the third beauty? Every Kashmiri mystic states that when one has the first taste and experience of consciousness, tears of joy overflow uncontrollably. Poetry breaks out spontaneously because ordinary words cannot describe that intense feeling. So truth, beauty, and consciousness. These are the trinity dimensions of the Kashmiri highway. This is what 
a Kashmiri stands for as he travels through his way of life. I had first talked about this Trinity values in my novel, The Last Queen of Kashmir, Kotarani, where I deal with her world and its civilization in greater detail. I expanded on this in my second novel, Dawn, the Warrior Princess of Kashmir, which was published by Penguin. So let us take the thesis, truth, beauty, and consciousness, and compare it with what we see today, which is the exact opposite. Fake, and therefore relying on force to impose faith, blind faith, ugly, because it involves violence and material, as opposed to consciousness. And you will see that all the problems of humanity today are associated with this alternate highway. Whether it is environmental problems where on this highway people degrade nature, whether it is dualism where on this highway there is the greatest evil, the idea of the other, mental illness because people have lost touch with the self as they get subjugated or violence. Humanity will have to inexorably come on the Kashmir highway, build a way of life around beauty, truth, and consciousness. Only then will there be freedom, fulfillment, peace, and bliss. So I rest my case that if you intuitively, just intuitively, stand up for beauty, embrace beauty, become a beautiful human being, that you become a seeker of truth, that you look at reality beyond the material world, and you travel on this highway, then you will get closer to your end goal in life, which is to have it all, where all is infinite, both in material terms and metaphysical terms. And if you intuitively accept it, as do most Hindus, so I could have used the word, we are all Hindus now, but that, you know, would not have had the edge to it. But what I have said, is true of most Hindus also. But for those who are on alternate pathway, I ask you to embrace the lifestyle and values of beauty, truth, and consciousness. This threefold pathway is the noblest pathway. We are all Kashmiris now or in the process of becoming Kashmiri. 40 million Americans are practicing the Kashmiri and Patanjali yoga. The world, whether Latin or whether any other European language, communicates with the grammar of the Kashmiri and Panali. I can go on, but for now, we can proclaim the end of all other highways is drawing closer because they are all dead ends. They were designed to control and subjugate, not liberate and create. We're all Kashmiris now. 
I pay my obeisance to Tripura Sundari and thank Kanchi Math for giving me the opportunity to place this humble offering on behalf of my community to the goddess who has given so much to us. Namaskar. Thank you, Rakesh Ji. For a moment, I felt like we are cruising in a Kashmiri highway similar to I-75 or I-95, looking at all the developments and uh, looking around, and suddenly felt that the highway needs a repair in the US and a trillion dollar. So no wonder the, it's looking like an alternate highway that you explained. Hopefully, I think our destination is going to be a greater new highway that you explained very clearly and finally ended up saying why we are all Hindus. And it was a very nice, uh, informative, uh, uh, not, there is nobody to debate you on this here, but I think people will accept the facts and the message that you communicated today. Very fascinating and very interesting. So hopefully we will cruise that uh, highway, all roads lead to Kashmir now, I think. Yes, uh, uh, as I often say, uh, Kashmir was a magnet where scholars from all over the world came. Uh, they explored the greatest truths there in peace and harmony. And we have to bring back that Kashmir. Uh, I say and more and more people now accept it, that Kashmir Valley was to the first millennia, what Silicon Valley is to the second millennia. And Raja, and thank you, Raja, for you know supporting the streaming. I think Ra Raja has just left, but okay, I'll but go anyway. to <laughs> I'll tell uh, you. You know, you know uh, even Raja, who you told me works for IBM, will agree with my assertion that the truths of Silicon Valley become obsolete the moment they are discovered. And so, uh, in a sense, uh, you know, there's always the next big thing coming out of Silicon Valley. But the truths of Kashmir Valley are eternal. They're eternal. There is nothing that comes out that invalidates. Uh, there is advancement, but there has never been ever any rejection of a fast truth. And that's what these rishis gave us. They gave us eternal truths that one can build this highway on. So I think uh, uh, we are going through this process of uh, uh, confidence that our civilization, our way of life, the Hindu framework of life is the answer to humanity and to the world because every other highway is going to result in destruction. You know, I have to, I have to share this uh, uh, message posted by Sarala Jagannathan. I don't know if you could read that. I Maybe can. Maybe have, uh, you can, okay. Maybe have another session with him, please. And can Kanji Mutt upload these sessions on the Facebook or YouTube? It's already there for us to go back and listen to these excellent lectures whenever we are feel the need to. This highway concept, I think, uh, very clearly now then formed an imprint on the mind now. Uh, people will always be thinking about what you mentioned. And as I, I keep saying, all the lectures, yours is the 35th in our series. The common denominator that I see everywhere is tolerance, compassion, inclusivity, coexistence. That's very clear message. This uh, Kashmir uh, cultural heritage awareness is conveying only that. I think the message reaches everyone and they understand and we stop seeing the violence. Every day we see something and the press and uh, uh, I wonder how this is going to be resolved if you keep reading every day like this. 
Well, I'm, I'm, we will we will discuss how it will get resolved, maybe on a later occasion. For now, uh, I'm glad, Sarlaji. Uh, by all means, you can go back and listen to YouTube. And but you know, you should go deeper. And as I have said, uh, uh, I have written two novels. Uh, these are in the story format. Uh, makes it easy to uh, read, enjoy, uh, and travel into what. Kashmir really is, and uh, you can uh, read those books also. And uh, as the process of rediscovery, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru wrote Discovery of India, but India right now is going through rediscovery. Uh, and that, I think, is a Pratyabhijna uh, moment, uh, a moment of recognition for all India, uh, all Hindus. Uh, and uh, we're realizing uh, that we are the truth. We are a beautiful people. And ugly people uh, have dominated humanity for too long. And the beautiful people, the warriors of truth, the Jedi Knights of humanity, the people who understand nature uh, is supreme, uh, who understand there is something beyond materiality. Uh, that's we just now have to have that confidence of taking the rest of humanity with us and go on the scenic highway. That Tripura Sundari, the three beauties beauty, truth, consciousness. And it's going to be a re emergence uh, soon, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So we will have you sometime soon. You think of a new okay. analogy like all roads lead to Kashmir, maybe yes. next one. Yes, and okay. uh, we'll have you sometime in July, August. Thank you so much, uh, okay. Rakeshi, for your time. Thank you. Joining us uh, early on a Sunday morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. We want to uh, thank uh, Kanchi Mutt and also Kamakodi TV for all the streaming through the YouTube and uh, Facebook channels. And also we want to thank Dinamalar. So if you read Dinamalar, our leading Tamil newspaper, you will get details about our Kashmiri program every Saturday. Today is an exception because Rakesh Ji is uh, in, uh, I think he's now in Georgia. He's supposed to be in New Jersey and he couldn't make it on a Saturday. So we wanted to accommodate him and that's why our program got shifted to Sunday. So every uh, week you will see the details of our Kashmir program in uh, the Enamala, uh, uh, newspaper. Or you can always look at the uh, Kanchi Mutt sites or Madhima Samajam. That's the reason why you should uh, subscribe to MDS uh, channel. We will continue this. We have booked up to July, August. There will be more interesting, uh, knowledgeable speakers, similar to what we had in all the 35 uh, lecture series. It's going to be fascinating, interesting uh, personalities are joining uh, in coming weeks. So. Stay tuned and join us next Saturday for an interesting topic. This time it's going to be a professor next Saturday uh, joining us from Delhi. We will keep you updated. Thank you very much. Once again, I want to thank VDSP for all the uh, streaming support that we get from them. And see you next Saturday. Jai Jai Shankara.